And that would be administered also by a health official, but it would be a lot easier to do. The, uh, the uh, fact is that the health professionals would, it would free, it would free up a lot. Let me just say, the self-swab is what it is. It's a self-swab. You do it yourself. The other has to be issued by a, a health professional. And it's something that uh, is, is quite difficult. And we think it's working out for the self-swap. And uh, if it would test positive, the people would go and uh, they would do what they have to do. But we think that's probably working out. I've asked the FDA to cut through the red tape and reduce regulatory barriers. Uh, we are looking at some very exciting things. And I'm going to be holding a second news conference either today. We're going to talk about the FDA. Uh, some things are happening that are quite exciting. And uh, we're going to be doing that either later today or tomorrow, fairly early tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But uh, the FDA, my instructions is I've been working very, very hard on a number of developments, and we'll be discussing them with you later today or tomorrow. And this afternoon, I'll be meeting with nurses on the front lines of the battle against the virus. They're truly American heroes. They want to get it done. They, they're incredible people. So we're going to be meeting with nurses. And uh, I actually look forward to that. They're very brave. They're taking a lot of risk. And they, uh, they have done an incredible job. And they never complain. Today, I'm also announcing that the Department of Housing and Urban Development is providing immediate relief to renters and homeowners by suspending all foreclosures and evictions until the end of April. So we're working very closely with Dr. Ben Carson and everybody from HUD. Uh, every generation of Americans has been called to make shared sacrifices for the good of the nation. In World War II, young people in their teenage years volunteered to fight. They wanted to fight so badly because they love our country. Workers refused to go home and slept in factory floors to keep assembly lines running. And, you know, the numbers of ships that they built during World War II to this day has never, nothing like that has ever been equal. They were doing ships uh, on a, literally on a daily basis. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And to this day, nobody's seen anything like that, what they were able to do during World War II. And now it's our time. We must sacrifice together because we are all in this together and we'll come through together. It's the invisible enemy. It's always the toughest enemy, the invisible enemy. But we're going to defeat the invisible enemy. I think we're going to do it even faster than we thought. And it will be a complete victory. It'll be a total victory. Uh, so we'll have a second conference, again, having to do with the FDA. And this. I think it's going to be potentially a very exciting uh, news conference. Uh, and we will do it as quickly as we can. So whether it's today or tomorrow. And I'll, uh, with that, ask Mike Pence to say a few words. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the White House Coronavirus Task Force met this morning. And now that we have cases in all 50 states, um, we're continuing to move out on the President's call to bring the full resources of the federal government, a full partnership with every state and territory, the full power of the American economy to support businesses and families. As the President says, uh, to us and uh, every day. We'll do whatever it takes. We're all in this together. Yesterday, the President uh, met with the tourism industry executives and also had an engaging discussion with uh, all the top companies in our industrial and medical supply chain. Now, the President, as you all are aware, also announced today that by mutual consent, uh, the northern border to Canada will be closed to non-essential travel. This does not include essential travel or the transit of goods, but it was through mutual discussion that took place this morning between the President and Prime Minister Trudeau and uh, the Department of Homeland Security will be effectuating uh, that decision. The President spoke with some of the nation's top business leaders today, again, to speak about the supply chain in the country. Uh, and uh, uh, for our part, we're going to be conducting a conference call later today with state and local health officials to renew uh, our ongoing commitment of cooperation and collaboration. Uh, as the President said last week in signing the uh, Stafford Act, uh, he stood up the National Response Coordination Center. And today, at the President's direction, uh, FEMA has gone to level one. Uh, 
FEMA's mission is to support disasters that are locally executed, state managed, and federally supported. And uh, tomorrow, uh, the President will be hosting all the nation's governors uh, from a video conference at FEMA uh, to ensure that uh, they have a full connection to all of the activated regions for FEMA uh, going uh, forward. Uh, with regard to testing, I'm pleased to report that uh, we're increasing the number of tests being performed by the thousands every day thanks to the public-private partnership that President Trump forged with commercial laboratories around the country. Our health experts tell us uh, to remind every American, it's important to remember, people without symptoms should not get tested. We want to make sure that the supply of testing is there uh, for those that need it most or are symptomatic or in the vulnerable population. Dr. Deborah Burks in a moment will address the progress that we're making on testing, the infection rate, uh, our recommendations to every America, as well as some important uh, new findings about the impact on youth that we're gaining from data that's coming in uh, from Europe that'll be important to every, every American. On the subject of supplies, the President has our task force uh, extremely uh, focused, uh, as the President mentioned yesterday, uh, mentioned that he's invoking the Defense Production Act today. Secretary Esper in a few moments will describe the ongoing efforts uh, that the Department of Defense is taking to make medical resources available. Uh, Secretary Robert Wilkie will announce decisions the VA has made to expand hospital capacity uh, within their system. Also with regard to medical personnel, at the President's direction, HHS is issuing a regulation today that will allow all doctors and medical professionals to practice across state lines to meet the needs of hospitals that may arise in adjoining areas. In addition to that, we are again today uh, asking every American and our medical community leaders uh, and hospitals to partner with us in delaying elective procedures uh, across the country in our healthcare system to ensure that medical supplies and medical capacity go where they're needed most. SEMA Verma will describe guidance that CMS will be issuing on that front. And finally, uh, just I want to remind every American of the, the President's 15-day guidance to slow the spread. Uh, we are grateful for members of the media and the general public that are adhering to these, sharing them with neighbors and friends. All of our experts uh, continue to believe that if every American will do their part and embrace and put into practice these principles, that we can significantly limit the reach of the coronavirus in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you very much. Dr. Brooks, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President. So, you know, we continue to look at data every single day. There are concerning reports coming out of France and Italy about some young people getting seriously ill and very seriously ill in the ICUs. We think part of this may be that people heeded the early data coming out of China and coming out of South Korea that the elderly or those with pre-existing medical conditions were at particular risk. It may have been that the millennial generation, our largest generation, our future, generation um, that will carry us through for the next multiple decades, there may be disproportional number of infections among that group. And so even if it's a rare occurrence, it may be seen more frequently in that group and be evident now. So we're looking at that information very carefully. We have not seen any significant mortality in the children. But we are concerned about the early reports coming out of Italy and France. So again, I'm going to call on that generation that's part of that group that brought us innovation, particularly throughout all of their ability to look around corners and skip through games. Um, I always went level by level. I didn't realize that you could go from level three to level seven. Um, that's what they've taught us. They look for things that we don't see. We need them to be healthy. So again, not only calling on you to heed what's in the guidance, but to really ensure that each and every one of you are protecting each other. And so we cannot have these large gatherings that continue to occur throughout the country for people who are off work to then be socializing in large groups and spreading the virus. You have the potential then to spread it to someone who does have a condition that none of us knew about and cause them to have a disastrous outcome. 
Finally, on the testing piece and what we're learning, I know you know last week in bringing the private sector, I think what has been exciting to me over the last two and a half weeks is to see this administration harness the full capacity of the private sector, understanding that a lot of our solutions that we need to confront this virus rely on the private sector. Bringing the private sector commercial labs was critical into this process. We are now beginning to see that they have spread out in a prioritized way because we asked them to, to prioritize the regions that were mostly affected. And so you still may have difficulty getting tests in areas that do not have significant cases. We've had them prioritize the regions where we need diagnosis and their diagnostic percent. Remember I told you South Korea was under 4%, so 96% of people were negative. The last report we've seen from the laboratories have about a 7 plus percent positivity rate. Still 93 plus percent or 92 percent are, are negative. But I think that's encouraging to me personally that we're prioritizing appropriately to those areas that have the greatest need. Um, today and yesterday, Thermo Fisher pushed out most of their laboratory um, testing capacity. And that will dramatically increase the platform and the ability to run additional tests in addition to Roche. So I appreciate everybody's attention to these numbers. I'm, I'm excited that we've prioritized where the need was the greatest. But again, please follow the guidance and please make sure in every report that you're putting out that you're talking about the presidential guidance to actually stop the spread of this virus. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah.